All right, section 2.1 is a graphical summary for qualitative data. In the last chapter, we learned what the difference between qualitative and quantitative data is. What is the difference? Qualitative data, a quality. It's not a number necessarily. It's a, it's a characteristic like a credit card, a, a, the type of car, a color, a brand of something. So that would be qualitative data. Quantitative data is, it's a number, it's a numeric. Our objectives tonight for this section are to construct frequency distributions for qualitative data, construct a bar graph, so we'll be looking at what a bar graph is, and then also to construct a pie chart. For your homework, I'm not going to have you actually construct the pie chart. I'm going to have you know how to read a pie chart and understand the traits and characteristics of it, so I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about how we would construct a pie chart. Objective one is to construct frequency distributions for qualitative data. The frequency of a category is the number of times it occurs within a data set. A frequency distribution is a table that organizes that data and presents the frequency for each category. So here's an example of a frequency distribution. Suppose a retailer accepts four types of credit cards and lists the types used by the last 50 customers. The frequency distribution presents the frequencies for each type of credit card. So here's the raw data in this table right here, and this is hard to just look at and glean any kind of information from. But if we were to organize this information into this frequency distribution, it's easier to get useful information out of here. Just looking at this raw display of data, it's hard to tell maybe that Visa is the most popular credit card to be used. That's probably because a lot of debit cards use Visa. And that Discover card is the least favorite credit card. But when we organize the information in a table like this, it's easy to tell. The first column would be your categories of credit cards. This is what we would use for the classes here. MasterCard, Visa, American Express, and Discover. And then to get the frequency, we just count how many times each one of these cards appeared. So for example, for the MasterCard, I could go through and I could count, well, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and I've got all the MasterCards. And that's how you make it. You just This is just a count of how often that particular thing appeared in the raw data set. Relative frequency. Any time in statistics you see the word relative, I want you to think percent. It is a percent of something. A frequency distribution displays how many observations are in each category. Sometimes we are interested in the proportion of observations in each category. The proportion of observations in a category is called the relative frequency of the category. So if I had 25% of the credit cards, I could write it as a percent or I could write it as a decimal, 0.25. This number we call a proportion, this number we call a percent, and on relative frequency tables for this book, they'll probably be using the proportion more often than not. In other publishers' books that I've used in the past, they switch between these two. Relative just means a part of a whole. The relative frequency of a category is the frequency of the category divided by the total of all the frequencies. If I wanted to find the relative frequency for the MasterCard, and I knew that there were 50 cards here, what I would do is I'd be taking my frequency, 11, and divide it by 50 because there's a total of 50 cards here. And I believe that's what we see down here, yes. So to construct the relative frequency distribution for the credit card data, we begin by summing the frequencies. The total of this column right here gives you the total of items that were in your data set. Just add up these four numbers and you get 50. Then if you take each number in this category and divide by that total, you get the proportion or the relative frequency. So this number right here is called a proportion. How you get the proportion is you take the part from the category and divide it by the total. This symbol right here is a capital sigma. It means summation in statistics. Summation just means add. So if I were to add up this column of frequencies, I would get 50. If I wanted to change this decimal to a percent, what would I do? Multiply by 100 and put a percent on it. So 0.22 would be equivalent to 22%. 0.46 would be 
46 percent you got the idea objective two is to construct bar graphs a bar graph is a graphical representation of a frequency distribution a bar graph consists of rectangles of equal width and that's important that the width be equal on those bars with one rectangle for each category the heights of the rectangles represent the frequencies or relative frequencies of the categories. The height of the rectangle corresponds to the count. On a bar graph also you'll notice that the bars don't touch. In the next section we're going to look at a bar graph for quantitative data and that's called a histogram. And on the histogram the bars do touch. So if you're opening a magazine or, or reading some research and you see a bar graph where you've got bars like this and the bars aren't touching you know right away that that represents qualitative data not quantitative data so there's a visual clue to clue you in on what type of data you're looking at <clears throat> following are the frequency and relative frequency bar graphs for the credit card data notice that the shape of the bars on both of these look exactly the same that's because they represent the same data. We see that Visa is the highest, MasterCard is next, followed by American Express and then Discover. Whenever you're reading a bar graph, the vertical axis here, the y-axis, would tell you whether or not you're looking at counts, which is the frequency, or percents or proportions, which is the relative frequency. And then your categories are listed across the bottom. So if I have my categories listed in the same order on both of these, the frequency distribution and the relative frequency distribution, the graphs should look identical even if I removed all of the numbers and words from everything. A Puerto chart is one bar graph where the bars may touch in some publications. It would be okay for the bars to touch. On a Puerto chart, all we do is we arrange the categories so that the category with the highest count is listed first, and then these other bars are in, listed in descending order. So on a Puerto chart, we arrange the categories so that they go from tallest to smallest. Why would you want to have a Puerto chart? In this one, you'd have to kind of stop and think and look to see because these are very similar well which one's bigger which one's smaller on a puerto chart the publisher takes care of that for you the author of the research and it leaves no doubt visa had the highest count then mastercard american express and discover so if the bars are close in height but slightly off on a puerto chart you can tell right away what the order from largest to smallest would be but a puerto chart is a bar chart or a bar graph it's just one where we've arranged things in order. It is possible to take a bar chart and turn it on its side. When you might want to do that is if your categories end up being really, really long and it's too awkward to write them in a, you know, under a vertical alignment. If that's the case, we would have a bar chart with horizontal bars so that our, we can take more space to write in our categories. But still, now the horizontal axis would give us, in this case, our relative frequency. I know this is relative frequency because these numbers down here represent percents. Does that make sense? It's just a bar chart turned on its side. It's also possible to have something called a side-by-side -side bar graph. Sometimes we want to compare two bar graphs that have the same categories. The best way to do this is to construct both bar graphs on the same axis, putting the bars that correspond to the same category next to each other. This is called a side-by-side -side bar graph. The title of the bar graph tells you what information you're being presented with. And then off on the side we're going to be looking to see if whether this is a frequency or a count. This is a frequency so this would be how we determine the heights of the bars. And then down here this is going to be our categories. And then this information right here we call the key kind of like a map has a key. This graph has a key that tells us which color bar represents which year for the frequency of visits to popular websites. The last objective then is to construct a pie chart and as I mentioned earlier I'm not going to have you construct the pie charts just understand how to read them and what goes into constructing a pie chart. A pie chart is an alternative to the bar graph for displaying relative frequency information. A pie chart is a circle which is divided into sectors, one for each category. The relative sizes of the sectors match the relative frequency of the categories. So for example, if a category has a relative frequency of 0.25, then the sector size is going to be a quarter of the circle. 
following is the pie chart for the credit card example at the beginning of this section. So with, when we were looking at our credit card data, we noticed that Visa had the highest amount of usage among those 50 customers. Well, Visa corresponds to 46% of the area of the circle. Sometimes we use different colors for the sectors just to help you identify the different categories. Sometimes we don't. So this wraps up section 2.1, so you should know how to construct a frequency and relative frequency distribution. What does relative mean again? Not your family member. It means a percent or a proportion. And how do we calculate that proportion? And I'm just going to call that total. The frequency for that category divided by the total count. What is a Puerto chart? It organizes your bar graph so that your categories go from tallest to smallest is the easy way to remember it. And then bar graphs can have horizontal bar bars or you could even have side-by-side -side bar graphs. And we've just gone over the pie chart, so I think we're good there. And this wraps up section 2.1.